In this video, we are going to discuss about updating UHV slide decks. We are going to discuss the format of UHV presentations, presentation basics, slide animation, slide transitions and file naming, followed by the steps for slide standardization. We will be using a theme called UHV theme 2022. After this, the slides have been standardized and to enhance them further we may have some highlighting the key points highlighting the questions and things like that and then scope for further work there are six common slide types that are given on the screen the title slide the team attribution slide the title and content slide which is the most common slide with the title at the top in the middle there is one place for all the text and at the bottom there is a footer and the footer contains the UHV logo like on this screen also you can see there is a footer and the footer is in grey and there is a small logo there the two content slide has got two contents on either side left and right the new two content slide is uh, with the two titles separate titles and a black line in the middle and then there is a plain background slide for slides with bigger diagrams in which we want to hide the title and the footer so those are the six common types of slides on this slide you can see the uh, main title slide this title slide will be used as the first slide and also if the presentation contains multiple sections then each section will have one of these slides so on this you can see on the top left hand side the UHV logo at the bottom left hand side you can see the creative commons CC0 logo followed by a small UHV logo and the team attribution that this material has been created by UHV team which is identified with uhv.org.in the website uhv.org.in more details are given in this and each slide deck should have one of these slides and by and large it is a hidden slide but when we give a slide deck to any anybody it needs to contain uh, this slide as far as the presentations are concerned some very basic points the title on the top uh, it's a blue background with a white uh, white text in title case the font is Arial 22 size 22 uh, it is not italicized it is you know plain Arial 22 font and title case basically means that all the major words start with a capital letter and all the minor words are in lower case so if we take an example this one is coexistence of the self and body so <clears throat> C is capitalized these two are not capitalized this is capitalized this is not capitalized and then this is capitalized so that is what title case means the body of the presentation is also Arial 22 black and in sentence case sentence case means the first word on the line starts with a capital letter while all the other words are in lower case and the use of red like I've used red over here or using something in bold like I've used bold over here uh, all caps in this one I have not used any all caps but these are to be used sparingly and to draw attention if we need to do that use of back boxes arrows shapes uh, etc can be kept to a minimum because these are hard to update and maintain they look nice but they are a little bit hard to maintain because we would be translating the slides or we would be updating the slides so it is a good idea to keep these to a bare minimum in special cases we may have 
uh, all of these kind of things. Uh, there are many slides with arrows and uh, boxes and shapes, but uh, they are not uh, the uh, not the norm. Then this new graphic has been developed that is the explore and verify graphic and in Hindi Janche or Parke. So we can place it at the bottom right hand side of the slide. So in this slide I put it on the bottom left hand side over here like this rather than any arbitrary place on the slide. If there is no place at the bottom uh, right hand side of the slide then maybe it can be placed somewhere else. So for example it might be placed over here uh, in case this uh, place is already occupied. So those are very simple uh, presentation basics. One important thing is when we are using pictures or graphics then we must lock the aspect ratio before resizing. So on the left hand side you see uh, Professor Punya's photograph over here. So this aspect size, aspect ratio means the ratio of the width to the height. So this aspect ratio should be constant. So you can see you know, when you format the picture you can see. So if you lock the aspect ratio then you will get uh, and resize it. So if you want to change the height or you want to change the width etc. it will keep the aspect ratio intact. But if you see these pictures on the right hand side this one we have not kept the aspect ratio and it is uh, stretched vertically and this one is also stretched uh, horizontally. This, this one is stretched horizontally. Slide animation may be, uh, slides may be animated to highlight some key points or the kind of questions that we are asking, particularly these exploratory, reflective and evaluative questions. Maybe other questions are there. So those questions and the key points can be highlighted and they should be highlighted so that the attention goes to those points. And Generally the animation that we are using is appear. So if something is not there it will simply appear. And we may also use this uh, swipe something that as you saw in the in the beginning the uh, table of contents was coming from the left to right. So those kind of things you can use uh, sparingly. Avoid too much of animation. I've seen slides in which each bird is coming uh, or each line is coming one at a time or something is just uh, appearing um, you know some jazzy animations are there or timed animations that you start something and then it keeps coming over a period of time so all those kind of things are not really necessary so we can avoid them so we can keep our slides quite simple slide transitions we are generally using none. So slides move from one slide to the other slide, uh, just appear, disappear and appear. Uh, while recording, like when we are doing Zoom sessions uh, or we are recording something, then fade is okay. So in this case, I am using fade. So it fades to the previous, fades to the next, like that. Try to avoid other types of transitions. Uh, I've seen transitions like cube. It looks very jazzy, but online when we are doing it, there is a certain lag. So it's not a very uh, uh, usable transition uh, in online uh, presentations. When we are doing face-to-face -face presentations, those cube type of transitions look nice. So you can certainly use them, but try to avoid Next, file naming. This is quite important to be able to keep the files, the presentation files or other files and to find them when you need to find them. Try to use meaningful and simple and short names so that you can remember the name and you can search those names. 
So on the right hand side, there are some examples. Uh, if I use a very long name, particularly names which are longer than 30 characters, uh, they cause problem when you copy them uh, in, uh, you know, take a backup of them. So they may cause some problems. So <clears throat> try to keep the file name to something simple and short. So if you use L1 participant intro, that is a short name that can be fine. For master files where we are going to use only the latest version. So if you have a presentation called participant intro, you are going to use only the latest version. You need not keep all the previous versions except as an archive. But even in an archive, if you have the same file name and at the end you have some version numbers, it will automatically sort by name to the earliest version on the top and the uh, most recent version at the bottom like this, 1, 4, 7, like that. It will sort. Um, and of course, when you um, want to find out you know, what what is the latest update date, you can always look into that. Uh, it is there in the file properties. Also in the um, file list, you can sort by date. So you can always uh, do the date sorting. But uh, if you keep it with the latest uh, version numbers, it is easy to find them and also to uh, uh, keep track of them. I've written over here, do not use file names with words like final because there are very few things that are really final. I've seen file names which say final version 2 and so on. So it keeps going final, final, final. Also, don't use file names with US dates, the month, date, year or a month, year. So those formats like this uh, uh, examples on the right hand side you will notice that when you have some dates like this it is very hard to find out uh, which is the latest so february 2020 is going to appear before december 21 because it is uh, you know sorted by the alphabet f and d so it is a better idea to uh, not use these kind of things for recurring files recurring meaning files which you are going to have uh, many of and you want to keep them all so for example if you are going to keep minutes of meetings you do need to sort them and keep them so if it is possible to keep uh, the date in front of it or at the end of it in Gregorian date format in YYMMDD or YY, YYMMDD those formats will be fine either in the beginning of the file or at the end of the file those are fine or if you are simply keeping it with minutes NCUHV meeting 3 meeting 4 etc in some standard file format that is also okay so you need not have dates in the file name at all so you have uh, uh, easy time to find. You can find files and as well as uh, find file content in the search in Windows. You just have to choose the right option for it. Now this is the most important part of this presentation that when we are going to update the slides that we have, I'm going to actually show you one where we are going to do that and see the theme that is uh, been made for this uh, slides is called UHV theme 2022 and it has these slide types title slide master and all the title slides will have the same background and you know same size and all that so this is the title slide master blank slide master with no background it is plain blank slide uh, title only slide master it has the title on the top but no content in the middle so if you have a drawing or something you want to put you can use this 
this one is title and content slide master it has a title it has a middle all this it has some content format uh, at level 1 level 2 etc so we'll see how that works and then you have these two content slide master which is the old style uh, it has one big long title at the top and no separator you know in the middle there is no line the new one the two content slide master in the new style has got two contents on the left hand side and the right hand side there are two holders for content and then of course on the left hand side and the right hand side there is place for content and i have also put a last slide master uh, a marker so when we check there should be no other layouts beyond this point if there are then you know we can uh, we can go to that and you know deal with it so in this slide uh, deck also we are using the same theme and to use to view the theme you can go to the view slide master themes and take a look at it so let's go and do that now uh, let's take uh, this and go to view and you can say view <clears throat> over here it says normal over here it says slide master so when i click on this i can view the slide master so you can see all of these and then the slide master if you click on the slide master you can see the themes so you can see all the themes there are multiple themes i would encourage you to save the current theme so you may give it a name UHV theme 2022 and uh, it is an office theme so you can give it and save it okay. so it will also be saved in your file and when you create new presentations you can create a new presentation with that theme so you don't have to um, worry about these standards uh, from then onwards after you have saved the theme you can go back to view and go back to normal so you are back to your slides so you have saved the UHV theme 2022 on your computer and now we are going to use it so steps for slide standardization there is a certain amount of present uh, there is a certain amount of preparation that is required this saving the theme we have already done which is written on the bottom in terms of preparation number one copy the set of slides to be updated to a temporary directory so what i have done is i have copied these files in one in two etc all these files uh, from uhv1 i have copied them to a temporary directory Step two is to copy a blank of the UHB presentation 2022 and make as many copies of this as are files to be updated. So if I have to update four files here, I will make four copies of blank UHB presentation 2022 and keep them in this directory. Okay, so we have four copies of blank UHB presentation. And I'm going to take this and make uh, rename these files to the next version for each of these files. Okay, so instead of version 1, I'm going to call it version 2. Similarly, this version 6, like that, you know, for all the all the files. So if you have you know 20 files to do, you'll have to do it. Uh, 20 times so I've got uh, four files now and there as you can see they are in sequence next is to update these files so if we take all these files that are there open the previous version and copy all the slides so if I am going to take version 3 and version 2 I'm going to open both of these files okay so they are opening 
and they are you can see this uh, format is also different and when we take the new one the format is different and in this new one it has only these two slides in the old one it has all these slides what you can see on the left hand side so i'm going to select all the slides control a like that control c for copying the slides go to the new new file and then i'm just going to insert in place 2 and paste these slides using destination theme this is important i've been saying use source theme like that but over here we are simply going to use destination theme whatever theme that we use gets copied over also so we don't want to copy a new theme here so you must use destination theme so we are copying all the slides like that okay so you have the first slide which is the uh, yellow slide here and then you have all the other slides okay now you will notice that the the width of the slides has increased but the titles have been shifted you can see this title has been shifted or it is the old title but it is not in the right place in this two content slide also you can see the title is over here but both the sides are here the left side and the right side both are there so that's very simple i mean we can just leave it like this if you want but it is better to clean it up okay so we have done one and two we opened the previous version of the file and copied all the slides and we opened the new version of the file and pasted all the slides in position two using destination format so we have done these two steps now we have to do all these select all similar slide types and format with that master format so all the title slides we will select and format the titles then all title and content slides we will select all of them and mark them with uh, the new title and content so like that we will do for these four slide types next we come to all the slides which have this one content one this this type type of content so if there are multiple slides like that so i'm going to select two slides right click on it layout title and content not just title only but title and content so that's all so once you do that this uh, title at the top is left aligned and all that so nothing else has to be done for these slides now you come to the slides which have two content so you highlight all the slides that have two content i have selected three of these slides right click and then layout and you can choose two content okay if you just choose the old two content nothing else will happen other than the title shifting to the left hand side so you can see from here the title has shifted to the left hand side like that okay so for example on this this slide i would prefer to use the new style so the new style is layout you click on the slide select the layout and two content new style over here so when you do that you have aspirations and so on you know this content is there and i am going to select uh, the content that should go on the second content holder so if i place it over here it uh, is properly lined up with the right hand side okay. so this uh, simple thing if you can do it will make it uh, cleaner i'm going to clean up this also so now the slide is uh, is prepared like that we have to see for all the slides with the titles all the title and content slides the two content slides and finally the blank format slides uh, in this presentation let us see if there is any blank content slide otherwise okay yeah there are some over here 
you can see the border over here you see over here the border is there at the top and the bottom so this all these slides all these three slides they have the same problem so i'm going to choose the layout layout blank this blank layout and see what happens okay so this has cleaned it up now in this uh, particular computer this font is not there so it is showing like this but on your computer hopefully it will uh, this will not be a problem so we are done with all these kind of slides okay and then you can review all the slides if there are any minor corrections you can do that so in these uh, four simple steps you can update uh, all the slides it is quite simple i think it's not a very big deal but we have to be very careful when we are doing this careful in the sense that we might miss something um, like for example on this we have not shifted this layout okay, so I've, i'll go to this slide pick the layout of title and content like over here and see what has happened now this is all that needs to be done for those this kind of slides okay so if you miss any slide you simply click on that slide pick the right layout and select that right layout and finally <laughs> we have this explore and verify sign uh, which is different from the pause and think sign so you can place this in each of the slides best would be to to put it at the very bottom right hand side but notice on this slide there is something written on that so we have to choose some other place for it on this slide on this slide it is uh, placed right somewhere here so if i were to remove this sign and place uh, the sign there is place on the bottom left hand side so i can place it over there okay i can place it and i can align the borders properly so that it is uh, at the bottom right hand side okay with these five simple steps we can complete the slide standardization process uh, my estimate is that for each slide deck of uh, 30 40 slides it will not take more than 10 minutes to do this uh, update Uh, the explore and verify sign might take some time so you can choose to leave it for right now and then do it in second round uh, or you can if you can do it that is that is fine now some other points which we can do as enhancements now it doesn't mean that we start doing enhancements while we are doing the standardization we can do these enhancements uh, as and when time permits so these are optional enhancements that we can do uh, after all the slide decks have been standardized over here we can highlight you know some of the key points we can bring in the key points one at a time like so or we can bring them uh, you know traveling from left to right right to left etc so all that we can do uh, it will bring attention to those key points similarly if on a slide some uh, key points are written you know some detail is written the key point is written and more detail is written it's a little difficult to pay attention to the key point so what we can do is we can uh, dim the other points and um, uh, bold the key point so if it was like this we can make it like this so like that you know you can make them you can bring out the point that is being talked about questions may be highlighted in a bold box like so so you can you know put uh, a, a box with the questions and that can come in with the animation so like that you can highlight now when you are presenting then you can use a laser pointer instead of uh, just a plain mouse pointer right now i'm using a plain mouse pointer but i can go to Uh, this uh, place pick up the laser pointer and start pointing with the laser pointer that is a very simple thing to do okay so that is one easy thing to do and the mouse will continue to work um second mark the point being discussed with the contrasting color 
So I have, you know, marked this with red, this with the gold, and highlighted with, you know, with the uh, highlighter. So you have all these options over here. You have, you have a pen uh, of different colors or highlighter of different colors. So all that can be done uh, in the slide. Of course, it would help to have a, a, you know, graphic pad so that you don't have to use the mouse for doing this. Then you can write down more detail over the slide with the pen. So in this example, um, the slide had human being is equal to, and then I wrote self body and so on. So for example, I can write on this uh, a graphic tablet. So I can write, you know, I can write more things over here more details etc i can do all that with the with the, the graphic pen with the tablet rather then you can write down the observations of part of the participants on the slide but of course when you are developing your slides you need to keep place for them you know you can you have to keep place for uh, writing so you write four something something five something something you can use the white or black slide to write temporary explanation. Uh, you can't save that in slides, unfortunately, but I, I don't know how to save it. Maybe there is a way to save it, but you can, uh, when you are in slide presentation, if you press B, it becomes black. If you press escape, it goes back. If you press W, it goes to white. So like that. Okay. So I'm going to press B. It is going to go to the blackboard and then on the blackboard I can write something. I had a red pen so it is uh, writing in red. So you can write something uh, etc. But when you escape that writing disappears and if you press B again it will not be there. Similarly you can press W and you can, you can again write something here. Right? and uh, you can escape uh, but it doesn't save it and then you can use the whiteboard that is if it is available on the online platform so zoom has a very nice uh, whiteboard and this right hand side this one is an example of saving the and this whiteboard what is written on the whiteboard with multiple colors you can save it you can share it it's just like a jpeg file you can share that uh, after the um, uh, session is over. Uh, you can also insert it in your slide. So if you have written something, you can insert it in your slide. So it's very simple to do all that. And of course, this is not the last word. Uh, I would like you to keep exploring. The idea is not just the slides, but facilitating to draw attention of the participants for their self-reflection and self-exploration. Uh, there are many things that could be done. Uh, I've written three things that I uh, feel that if we can do them, that will be very nice. So suppose there is a common change to a word or phrase in a group of slides. So if you have you know, many slides to be changed, so suppose you have all these slides to be changed. Okay. And you have to change some word. For example, in this, I picked the word pranic order. So if you have to update this word pranic order to bio order, not only in this directory, but let us say all over the C drive, then how would you do it? So this is one uh, uh, scope for future work. Similarly, some slides are used in multiple slide decks. Okay. So the slide about this is a proposal, verify it on your own right. That slide is used in many slide decks. Now, if we have to change that, then how do we go about it and make that change in all the slide decks? Explore and verify graphic has to be updated in all the slide decks. So can we have some way to do that? So that is another scope for future work. Uh, third one is interesting <laughs> if you have Hindi and English slides one after the other. So you can have uh, an English slide, then an Hindi slide, then another English slide and so on. 
uh, is there any way in which we can uh, choose some parameter for that slide deck and say that now show me only the English slides and switch the parameter and say show me only the Hindi slides so like that so that is another possible you know, scope for future work if you want to learn more about PowerPoint you can uh, you know take a look at these links that are given over here on this slide uh, there is a beginners uh, link and also advanced link so that's it from my side updating UHV slide decks all the best thank you very much